I'm going to show you how to use this template if you are very, very used to using the paper space to prepare your drawing for printing. Okay, so I'm going to use the same thing here, which is the furniture layout plan example and the ceiling plan. Okay, let's say we have prepared our reflected ceiling plan already here and here. Okay, let me just erase this one away. We don't need this one for now. All right, now what's going to happen is we are going to click on paper space template. Here, you will find that there is an example given already here, these two. Huh? But I will just show you how to work this anyway. So paper space basically, um, what we can do is we can open a new viewport here by keying in this command called V P O R T. Okay, V P O R T, and we look for single and we draw a rectangle. All right. For example, if we want to use a an A3, we want to prepare let's say an A3 size drawing, right? So we will just copy this and put it where we need it to be plotted and let's say we want to be printing this area here so once we have let me repeat this again we will key in let's call out a new viewport by keying in b p o r t b port command single and we open a view now after we do that already we need to select the correct scale for it okay so we need to select the viewport itself and down here where my mouse is pointing this is where we can select and scale the viewport that we want so we know we're going to plot this in scale 1 is to 20 so we will just use this scale 1 is to 20 here and we can zoom double click to go into the viewport and pan it to the right view we want to use okay view area we want to use we got to be quite careful not to zoom in or out by rolling in the mouse this happens very frequently with i with sometimes a, a defective mouse that we have been over using for a long time already okay but after we've done let's say we've done this by mistake we can easily rectify this by again clicking on the views and changing the scale again all right and once we're done with this, okay, we got to make sure this viewport that we have created in is a non-printing layer. If not, the rectangle will appear in the drawing. Okay, so what we do is we change this, this viewport, and we put this viewport's layer into what we call the depth points layer. The depth points layer by definition and by default is a non-printing layer. So it's designed to help to allow us to put such items that we don't want to print inside this particular layer here. And once we're done with this, you will move the drawing to align it so that you will fit nicely into the into our drawing that we want to position. And once we're done with this, we can simply reduce the viewport size to fit in the drawing here. And there you go, the drawing will be completed. All right, prepare accordingly here. Okay. And then obviously, next we can copy the symbols that we have prepared also. It's the same thing. And then we will be able to simply just copy the, the annotation symbols that we need to put into the drawing here as well. Okay. As well here. All right. So it works exactly the same as what we, what we have uh, shown you earlier on for, for the model space example. All right. One thing to note and to pay attention though. Okay is the dimensions issue now inside paper space all the dimension styles we will use will be scale one because we are going to print the drawings up one is to one later on 
So what's going to happen is we will go to annotate and then we will choose scale 1 and we will annotate according to the points that we need. All right, just to show you an example very quickly here. But wait a minute, if you compare this to our model space dimension here, this seems to be wrong, okay? This seems to be wrong because the room should be 4.8 by 3 meters. But right now, if you look at this, the display is wrong. The numbers are wrong. It's, two point, it's 240 by 150 mm. Why is this like that? Okay, it's like this because the drawing is being scaled down 20 times as we speak. So if you look at it mathematically, it is 4 meters, okay, 4.8 divided by 20 equals to 2.4 or 240 mm. So this is obviously very wrong. Huh? So how we're going to do this is we need to select and rectify this by selecting one dimension here. Right click and go to properties. And under the primary units, under primary units here, and under the dimension scale linear, all right, we need to change this part to 20. Okay, because we're going to print this 20 scale, right? 20 times, huh? So once we have changed this, you notice that the numbers will be 4.8 now. So to make our life easier, okay, we can do an MA command, match property command, and select the source and select the targets. All right? And once we've done this, all the dimensions will be updated to the correct scale and the information will be correct also. All right, so that's how we use this template here. Okay, assume we have already completed the preparation of the drawing for printing. Now, before we want to print this, all right, let me just share with you uh, another way to preview this drawing even before um, to make sure everything is working correctly, okay? Now in the drawing, before we do anything else, uh, can we do a key in the command REA, okay, down here, REA, this command here, to regenerate the drawing and make sure the drawing is in the correct scale, correct line type scale. Notice here, this is a reflected ceiling plan example. These symbolic lines ought to be in hidden line because these are, these are mainly symbolic, okay? And uh, they need to be in hidden line, but it is not showing up because, because our LTS, our line type scale here is in scale of one is to 50. So we must make sure we get this one correct. So we will change the LTS. We must change the LTS again to 1. So our line type scale is now at 1. Okay, notice now the line types are all in hidden lines properly and the grid lines are all in the correct scale. All right, so please pay attention to this part here. Now, one, of, one more way uh, one more good uh, good practice or good trick that I would like to share with you all is this. Huh? Right now, if you notice, there is no way for us to tell the uh, whether or not this line width will be the correct line width that we want to use when printed. Okay, so one of the ways in which we want to be able to do this uh, is we can use this uh, this method or this technique to activate the line width display in AutoCAD before we even uh, do print reviews, okay? So we key in this command called options, okay, down here, options, all right? It will take us into the options menu. Then we click on user preferences. 
and we look for lightweight settings. So we can click on this option here called display line weight. And you will find that there is a default down here. Alright. So this default at let's say 0 0.05 means, alright, means it will show you the it will show you the line width properties and huh? the line thickness anything from 0 0.05 line width thickness onwards. Okay, let me just show you this one for uh, as an example. Zero, that means zero, anything with a line width of more than and 0 0.05 onwards will show a line width. Okay, so I'll apply and close and okay. Notice here as I zoom closer, this is a 0 0.01 line. Okay, you find that they, they look like they have a line width appearing down here. Okay, this one and this one. All right. All right. You will find that when we have activated the line weight display, you will be able to see it when you zoom in closer here and you will be able to see the line weight display here. It helps with the clarity of what we want to see. Okay. And print. So once this is done, we can simply uh, press Control P again, and then uh, for this one there are no paper space set up. So what we can do is we can we got to do this our, on our own, all right? So we can simply window select this, window select the regions we want to print, and make sure we use one is to one, and we change the printer to, we've got to use this one, all right, drawing to PDF, and we do a center the plot, make sure we use the SPBW standard A3 for the pen assignments, and we click on preview, and to make sure everything works properly, all right, so everything looks correctly, and we can now, all right, we can now add to this, just call it, let's say, E3 furniture layout plan, all right? Or O1, I add O1 here, and OK. So I'm, we will click OK now, and put this one, okay? Except I'm going to change this one to paper space. Okay, I'm going to just rename this paper space. Alright, so let's take a look at the example here. So we're going to open up these two. Okay, if you notice here, this one is the drawing that was printed using model space and this drawing here was printed using paper space. Alright, here and here. Okay, so if we were to compare this to they are basically the same in terms of the scale in terms of the line weight. Alright, they are essentially exactly the same. It looks a little bit different because we set up the, the uh, material specifications a little bit differently here. All right, and some had some symbols, the other doesn't have it, okay? So pretty much that's how, that's how this template is designed to help you work more efficiently in terms of having, uh, in terms of you using, preferring to use paper space or model space, all right?